Joining me now on Technically Speaking as we look into the Megatronics program is Tyler Samos from Memphis High School. Tyler, welcome to the program. Hi. And what year are you in, at Memphis? I'm in uh, 11th grade. Okay, what, what made you decide to go into mechatronics? Well, I seen this at an open house, so I was like, all right, this is cool. I see what it's about. And I walked in and I was instantly hooked. What do you hope to accomplish as a result of going um, through this program? Take what I've learned here and go and apply it to the field. And one nice thing with this, too, there seems to be a lot of job opportunities despite the economy for oh. people to have these kind of skills. Yep, it's, there's so many places and fields I could go from here. I could go into electrical. I could go into fluid power. I could go into computers or I could go into, into mechanical. Is there any one part of it that you like better than the other? Um, no, not really. It's just I like the, all of it together. Now what about once you finish the program here at Tech? What, do you need to go on to a four-year college or a trade school or, or well, what's the plan? I could, go, I could go into college or I could go into a tech center, which I would like to go into. Um, it would be a little bit easier instead of having to take all of the math and science and all of the English. Uh, to in order to get a degree, I could go to a tech center and get it in half the time. Great. So oh. we've got this big demonstration set up here for us. Tell us what we're going to do today. Well, right here we have a panel view, and what this does is it allows me to control the three cylinders down at the bottom. I could extend the cylinders, and then I could retract them. When I would hit a button, a si the panel view would send a signal to the PLC down here, and then it would, the signal would travel through these wires and into the solenoids on the far side there. And uh, whatever signal I tell the solenoids to do will allow the cylinders to either extend or retract. Now how so, would this be applied, uh, say in a factory or some kind of a manufacturing type of setting? Well, you could use this to control a conveyor belt. So you could hit a button and it could run the conveyor belt and with a series of switches you could have parts moving along the line and the switches could actually tell you where the parts are along the line. Mm, okay. So Now we have this other box up here. This is kind of what we used to see in a factory, right? Yeah. And this yep. is really the new new piece. Yep. You could see you would see this in most factories now it'd be a lot larger, but uh, well we have a smaller one here because we don't do as many things as a fat normal factory would do. Mm -hmm. But it's the, basically the same thing. But so for people operating machines today, and some of those, this is really what they would be operating yep. from, right? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I noticed behind me too, there was a laptop. Yeah, uh, the what, laptop. What role does that play in all of this? Well, the laptop allows us to actually write and create programs that we can send to the PLC, mm -hmm. and then we can run it from here, or we can run it direct, and we can see what's going on with our program mm -hmm. uh, through the computer. So we can troubleshoot it that way. Okay, I was going to say, so the computer allows you, if you have an issue someplace or parts not working it. right, yeah. that's where you'd find we it. We can use that or we can use this to try and solve it. A lot of technology, isn't there? Yep. Now also see up here on the rack, we're not using it for this particular project. You see a lot of relays and different things. What, what would these types of things be useful? Well, you could use it for several different things. It's mainly um, just for other parts that you wanted to install. It should be for a conveyor belt or for a larger factory. They could install several switches. They can install um, hundreds of things. They could even connect connect more PLCs to it. Okay. Now, PLC so, stands for again. Programmable Logistics Controller. Gotcha. Okay. So, and so, putting this all together, that allows us to to do a lot of different tasks in a very safe manner, doesn't it? Yes. Um, Safety is a big key, and this is the PLCs help us to maintain a safe work environment. Mm. So it allows us to uh, monitor where people are, and it kind of gets people away from mo moving parts and working parts. So that way they don't get injured by uh, a piston or something that can kill them or hurt them. Okay, very fascinating. So, Why don't you uh, put it through its paces once again for us? So it'd be It is. All right. And again, we're using pneumatics versus hydraulics yeah. in this particular Correct, application. Correct, because right? pneumatics are faster, and, but they don't have as much power as hydraulics, and they're a lot cleaner because they're using compressed air rather than oil or mm -hmm. water. Well, Tyler, thank you so much for taking yep, some time you. and showing us how all this works. Yep, not a problem. Very good. Great.
Thanks for joining us on this edition of Technically Speaking as we celebrate 35 years of St. Clair Tech. We hope you've enjoyed this look into the mechatronics and robotics program, and we'd like to thank the instructor Bob Timmerman and his students. To learn more about mechatronics or any other tech program, please go to the St. Clair Tech website at sctech.org. We hope to see you next time on Technically Speaking.